Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am your host, Harrison Graham. Go ahead and make sure you follow us here because uh, we're bringing you the latest Bears rumors and news uh, almost on a daily basis. Okay, let's talk Jimmy Garoppolo. Could the Bears trade for him? I'm going to give this one one smoking jay. This one, this idea has been circulating a little bit, and I just kind of wanted to bring it to the forefront here because uh, from the 49ers side of things, they are expected to draft a quarterback with the number three overall pick. If you're under a rock and haven't read the news the last five days or so, they moved up from number 12 to number three, uh, and the belief is that they will draft a quarterback in this year's draft. They maintain Jimmy G isn't getting traded, but if you're that aggressive and moving up, What's the real upside in keeping Jimmy G? So I'm not sure if I believe Shanahan and uh, John Lynch on that one, but we will see. They certainly can keep him, but I think uh, they will at least listen to calls on Jimmy Garoppolo as far as trading him. Here's the problem, especially for the Chicago Bears and really for a lot of teams at this point in free agency is a lot of teams have signed and used a lot of their salary cap. Jimmy G's cap hit is too high. If you trade for him based on how his contract is structured right now, you will take on over $24 million against your cap next season. As of right now, Bears have like two, three million bucks. Now they can move contracts around. They could cut Jimmy Graham. They could restructure. They could trade a couple of guys. There's stuff they can do, which is why, you know, you'll probably say, well, then how could they trade for Russell Wilson? Well, A, less of a cap hit, and B, that's a contract you're for sure willing to move stuff around for to bring him on board. But $24 million for 2021 for Jimmy Garoppolo is way too much money considering he, his injury history and his inconsistent play. Now, if this if you're going to trade for Jimmy G, the 49ers would have to restructure his contract or Jimmy G would have to agree to a restructuring uh, a la Nick Foles last year. Remember, four years, $88 million, They restructured that down to like three years, $24 million, uh, for Nick Foles. Whereas with Jimmy Garoppolo, is he willing to do that? Maybe, maybe not. If he thinks the 49ers are not go going to uh, start him at quarterback in the future, then maybe he would agree to that, but that would be a lot to give up on his end. But the 49ers on their end could convert uh, his contract into a signing bonus. It would lower his cap hit for 2021. But keep that in mind. Currently, they cannot trade for Jimmy Garoppolo at over $24 million for the 2021 season. And here's why. When Jimmy Garoppolo is fully healthy like he was in 2019, he's a well above average quarterback. This is a guy who is not the primary reason, but a big reason why the 49ers went to the Super Bowl. Now they had a great uh, defense. They ran the football well. Shanahan's a good schematic play caller, but Jimmy G did his part. He threw for almost 4,000 yards on just under 70%, two to one touchdown interception ratio. Last year, couldn't stay healthy and didn't play that well even when he was healthy, and that's really been the name of the game. In 2018, he tore his ACL. Last year, he missed 10 games with multiple ankle injuries. He's just a bit brittle at this point in his career, so if I'm trading for him, I need that contract to look a whole lot different. Won't rule it out, but I'll just give it one smoke and jay, which means it's barely true, but it's pretty unlikely. Should the Bears trade for Jimmy Garoppolo? Get your votes in. Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'm going to type my in for no at this point. If this was earlier on in free agency and there was more money available, sure. But I think at this point, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for the uh, Chicago Bears. Now, obviously, I'm bringing this up because this crazy trade happened on Friday. Really a pair of trades in which the 49ers trade with the Dolphins to move up to number three. Obviously, the Dolphins uh, did a, a side trade as well with the Eagles, but from some Simplicity purposes, it was basically just a three-team trade, but we know San Francisco's 99.9% .9 chance going to take a quarterback at number three overall, which naturally would lead you to believe, okay, Jimmy G's not their future. Jimmy G could be on the trade block and could be available for another NFL team. But again, I'm going to circle to that third note on screen. I'm not trading for a $24 million cap hit if I'm Chicago. Not for Jimmy G. He's just not worth it when he can't stay healthy nearly consistently enough. And I'll add this on top of it as well. Signing Andy Dalton to me signals no Jimmy G. They're not going to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, healthy Jimmy G is better than Dalton, but A, you don't know if he's going to be healthy, and B, 
he, it's not like monumentally better. Like, Jimmy G's up here when he's healthy. Dalton's like right here. It's not like he's, you know, below the table. He's not a disaster compared to Jimmy Garoppolo. But you don't give Andy Dalton uh, 10 million with an ability to make 13 million and go trade for $25 million Jimmy Garoppolo. You just don't do that. So I don't think it's very likely. Wouldn't rule it out because the Bears should explore every quarterback avenue. But I don't think it's going to happen for the Bears and Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, I got a deal alert for you guys. This hat and t-shirt combo, if you watched our video from Monday, you would know that this is 40% off for a limited time only. Guys, this is usually $49.99, which already isn't a bad price for a high-quality shirt and hat. Right now, it's $29.99. That's 40% off this hat and t-shirt combo for $30. Bucks. It's a great deal. Go to chatsports.com slash bears combo. Tons of sizes available on the t-shirts and then the hats. It's, uh, you know, it's flexible, multiple sizes uh, available, obviously, on that front. Chatsports.com slash bears combo. That link is in the comments it's in the description. Go ahead and click and shop today. Take advantage while it's 40% off. Do the Chicago Bears have interest in Mac Jones? Three smoking Jays, it's pretty likely. Honestly, it's probably four uh, bear down because they do. But I'll give it three. I don't know exactly what they're thinking. Here's what I know. Uh, Ryan Pace did attend his pro day at Alabama today. And Pace and Nagy have already spoken with Mac Jones previously. And Jones even said it was a good meeting, which is something we discussed on Monday's video as well. Bears own the number 20 pick in the first round, which makes it tough to draft one of the top quarterback prospects in Mac Jones, but they're, uh, they're looking into it, and they're certainly doing their homework. Ryan Pace and one of the Bears scouts was in uh, Tuscaloosa today to watch Mac Jones throw for the second time uh, this uh, in two weeks because Bama's had uh, two pro days because they have so many different prospects uh, who are going pro this year. Pace attended once again today. Now, we've talked Mac Jones a lot here. We've certainly uh, talked about him a lot, and we'll probably continue to do so as long as he remains at even a – slight possibility for the Bears. Of course they're interested. Why wouldn't they be interested? They should be interested in every quarterback uh, that is out there. They should be doing their homework on every draft prospect, especially the top five, six, seven guys, even some of the guys I don't uh, I don't like in the draft, the Kellen Mons of the world, the Kyle Trask. Stay tuned for Kellen Mond because uh, I'm, uh, I'm fired up about him here in just a moment. But look, Mac Jones, he's been moving up boards. There's, you know, some belief that the Niners could take him at number three overall, which I think would be crazy. But Bears are doing their homework. They're doing their due diligence. Now they're going to have to trade up a lot to go and get him. So let me ask you, would you trade up for him? Type T for trade up, type D for don't. Nah, it's too expensive, not willing to do that, uh, or more so not willing to let Ryan Pace do that. Uh, let me know. Type T for trade, type D for don't. I can't move into the top five for Mac Jones. Back half of top ten, maybe, uh, but it's kind of a tough one for me because I do think Mac Jones will definitely go top ten. Get your votes in on this one. Would you trade up for Mac Jones? Now, speaking of pro days, uh, Alabama wasn't the only school that had one today. Uh, all five of these schools did, and the Bears had representatives or scouts at all of them. Alabama, Ryan Pace is there. One of their top scouts is there. Texas A&M, uh, Kellen Mond, uh, stay tuned one second. Ohio State as well. Justin Fields had his pro day. Apparently, he looked really good. It's a pro day. It's scripted. Don't take too much stock into it. East Carolina, NC State, some lesser tier prospects as well. Guys, say it with me. Don't draft Kellen Mond. Repeat after me. Don't draft Kellen Mond. Guess who said that he's had or spoken to the uh, Chicago Bears multiple times during this pre-draft prospect? That is one Kellen Mond. Please don't do this, especially in the first round. I will have a meltdown on draft night live on this channel if they draft Kellen Mond at number 20 overall. It might be the last video we ever do. Jokes, but it's going to be bad if, if, if they do that at number 20. And if that happens, that's the, that's the peak of the Ryan Pace arrow. Kellen Mond in the first round. Come on down to the Windy City, baby. Don't do it, Ryan Pace, please. McCaskey, step in. Don't let him do it. Or Nagy, give him a bad evaluation. I am just out on Kellen Mond. If I haven't made that clear, then you haven't been watching this show. If you don't trust Ryan Pace, and if you want to be uh, like the guy last week who said hashtag Graham for GM, hey, you guys want to start the campaign, I'll hop on board. Type me in the comments. I don't trust him. I don't think he can evaluate quarterbacks. 
I don't think he's the right man in charge. Spam me in the comments if you don't trust Ryan Pace. Now subscribe to Chicago Bears now. My producer Brett Scott is cracking up in my ear because he knows the Bears might just screw it up, which, hey, you know, if they do, subscribe. We're going to break it down. We can vent together. Daily videos live every Tuesday, 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central Time. Join us every single day. Tons of coverage for you guys. Hit that big red button or follow the link below, youtube.com slash bears now. Videos, daily, free, news, rumors, mailbags, draft, free agency. We cover it all. Subscribe to Chicago Bears now. Let's get to 25,000 subs before the draft. We're at 24 and some change. I think we can get there with your help. Does Matt Nagy need to escape, in quotes, Chicago? Ah, this is fake news. Now, Colin Cowherd on his uh, – his simulcasted radio show with Fox Sports 1 talked about this recently. And, and Cowherd's had Nagy on before. He's a fan of his. He likes Matt Nagy. And you guys know me. I actually like Nagy, too. I've been a Nagy defender, but I'm also realistic. So let's just kind of break down what happened here. Cowherd's been basically ripping the Bears for weeks now. The whole QB1 tweet uh, from the Bears, uh, the Andy Dalton, the Twitter thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. It, it was tone deaf. There's no doubt about it. You look at the replies to that. Not one reply uh, was excited uh, about that tweet, and a Cowherd basically said, look, this is, a, this is an organization that doesn't know what they're doing. They have a bad ownership with the McCaskies. Their GM, Ryan Pace, uh, doesn't know what he's doing either. And he pointed out the fact that Nagy has led this team to the playoffs in two out of three seasons and has a well above 500 record at 28 and 20. Those are all points I've made before too, by the way, when I've defended Nagy in the past. Now, here's uh, Cowherd, and I'll kind of explain why this is fake and this is too far from him. Uh, the Bears don't know what they're doing. Nagy needs to escape Chicago because I think he can coach. You've heard of Escape from Alcatraz, Matt Nagy Escape from Chicago. That is the movie poster. He is trapped. Now, Colin Cowherd has some good points. Bears ownership is cheap, and they don't understand football. That's number one. And number two, I do think Nagy is a good coach. Maybe he's not as good as I think he is or as Cowherd thinks he is, but I think he comes from a good background, and I think he has uh, an ability to evaluate talent. Go look at his 2017 QB evaluations. He absolutely nailed it when it came to Mahomes, Watson, and Trubisky. That being said, saying he needs to escape – that's, a, that's ridiculous. That's a little too far. It's not like the Bears. Is there some dysfunction? Yes. This isn't the Cleveland Browns pre-2020. This isn't the Cincinnati Bengals literally forever. Maybe they're starting to get on track with Joe Burrow. This is the Chicago Bears. This is Chi-Town. This is not like some bad opportunity for Matt Nagy. Does he have some challenges? Yeah, I don't think his GM's very smart. I think ownership is questionable. But there are much worse jobs as a head coach in the NFL. Like, this is not a bottom five NFL head coaching job. This is the Chicago Bears, okay? Like, I, I agree with some of Cowherd's bullet points on Matt Nagy. I think he can coach. I, I, I don't think he's a bad coach. I think he's a smart, offensive-minded uh, individual. But he's not trapped, and he deserves some blame for some of the shortcomings in recent years. Now, I've said over and over again, I'd like to see what he could do with a competent quarterback, which he has never had uh, during his time in Chicago. And, you know, once again, he's got a bridge guy in Andy Dalton. But, you know, we'll see. I'd love to see him get a, a top-flight quarterback before the Bears fire him at some point, because if he doesn't, they probably will, because they won't win enough. But saying he needs to escape – that's a bit far for me. I, I don't think the Bears are just the biggest dumpster fire in sports or anything like that. They've still gone to the playoffs in two out of the last three years, and I'll concede a lot of that is probably due to Nagy's coaching. So some good points by Cowherd, but he went too far. Grade Matt Nagy as a head coach. I know you guys aren't as high on him as I am. Look, I'm not going to give him an A+. Plus. B-. minus. Like It's been a mix, mixed bag, but you've taken this team to the playoffs two out of three years. Ask yourself this. Is this team in a better spot with Matt Nagy than it was with John Fox? That's not even close, if you ask me. So I'll give it a B-. I think Nagy's done some good things. still think he has a lot of work to do if he wants to stay long-term.